we're going to talk about themes and uh, the possibility that they'll eat your WordPress site. Um, so that's the URL for the slide if you want to follow along or pull them up later. I am a WordPress developer primarily. I work at PressUp. We do WordPress and more uh, to make the great sites. And then we, we write about WordPress and related topics and opinions at WP Shout. Um, who's this talk for? It's kind of for everyone. Uh, theme developers, people who are actually making themes. Theme users, just someone who's in the process of using a theme on a day-to-day -day basis. Someone who just like makes some small modifications to their theme should probably think about this stuff. And if you're in the process of looking to buy a theme, definitely this is for you. Um, please stop me at any point if I lose you. Uh, this is a topic I've thought a lot about, talked a lot about. Uh, so it's really easy for me to forget what things people find confusing or complicated or strange. So please just raise your hand and holler out if you ever find yourself in that situation. All right. So my goals are that by the end of this kind of this this presentation, you'll know what I mean by theme creep. You'll understand what it looks like uh, out in the wild. You'll know why it can be a problem, how to remove it as a problem, where it already exists, and how to prevent from having a problem in the future. Um, before we dive too deep in, I want to say, yay, WordPress themes! Because, uh, you know, I, I started out with why they're terrible and you should be scared of them. So, they're awesome. They do really cool things. The fact that you can change the way your site looks without having to worry about uh, your content and how to get it moved over is really great. And is one of the great powerful things about WordPress. Um, the problem is that doesn't always happen. Um, so what's a WordPress theme? According to the Codex, which is the Bible of WordPress, WordPress themes are files that work together to create the design and functionality of a WordPress site. Each theme may be be different, offering many choices for site owners to instantly change their website look. That's the goal. And I also highlight it in the and functionality because I think it's really a problematic part that I want to talk about. So, two stories. One, me. Um, this is a couple of years ago, I was kind of new to WordPress and I just started doing some things that ended up to be kind of bad in retrospect. I wanted to uh, have some Google Google Analytics on my site so I can see who was going where, what they were looking at, that kind of stuff. And so I signed up for a Google Analytics account. They were like, here's this code, just put it in the header of your website. Um, and I knew my themes header.php would get, get me what I wanted, and it worked. So I just pasted it right in there. Uh, it's really awesome. I also decided I wanted a taxonomy for my posts so that I could say that the posts on this blog belong to a series about you know, my dog, or my family, or whatever. And so I saw that, I found a little snippet online, and I found that I could just paste that into a functions.php file of the theme, and it would work. And it did, and it was great. Uh, and now, I want to tell you about Ken. Ken was just some guy, worked at a marketing agency, and was looking for a WordPress theme, because his boss told him he should go find one and use it. Uh, Ken knew that SEO mattered a lot in marketing, uh, and so when he saw that his theme would provide SEO for him, he thought, that is really awesome. So, and he, so he got these little boxes on the bottom of every page and let him type in all his keywords and his meta descriptions and all that kind of stuff. And it went right into his theme and he was really happy. He also got these awesome page layouts. He wanted a banner that would have buttons and all these cool things. And he just used these short codes, assigning a couple variables into into uh, the short code and it would spit it out and make it look real good. He felt like a rock star. His boss loved him. And his boss came to him and he was like, I want some FAQs on this site. And he was like, yeah, I got them, right there. I didn't even have to do anything. <laughs> uh, the catch. There is always a catch. Uh, eventually, you want to switch themes. And the problem is, if you're relying on your theme to do a lot of the things that me and Ken were, bad things happen. So how I was got. Uh, this is what happened to my analytics when I switched themes. I didn't realize for a while. Uh, but you know, it's one of those things where a week later you're like, oh, I wasn't actually getting any data. Um, and then I also lost my series. I was like, where did that go? Um, it just disappeared when I switched themes. And I didn't think until after it happened 
Oh, that must be because it was part of the theme that I'm no longer using. Similarly, Ken got that. A few months later, he realized that all his nice meta descriptions for all his pages that made, him, made them appear right in Google weren't working, and instead Google was always selecting its own part of his page. And that happened. Um, that, that, that before looked really awesome. It had like a banner with a button. It's this really cool thing. Instead, it looks like that. His boss isn't too happy. And his boss also lost his FAQ page, so he's not very happy about that. And that's the theme. When the theme that was doing multiple things gets swapped out, bad things happen. Unexpected things. Um, and so now I wanted to talk with, shift away from WordPress a little bit, talk about an idea called technical debt. Technical, technical debt, sorry, is when the way a system currently works is, is indebted to the future. Um, such that every change you make in the future requires that you make more changes than you should so that you can move forward. So you're always paying down this debt to the choices you made in the past in order to move forward. So many different things can cause tech to that. One is obviously your boss yelling at you that he needed to say yesterday. One is that you just don't understand what you're doing, and that's what happened to me. And what happened to Ken, we didn't really think through the full implications of the choices that we were making. We just knew that these things were working. Um, also, these are more technical things like tight coupling, and a lack of documentation, if things are being developed at the same time, or things aren't being tested as they're being made. So WordPress itself has a lot of technical debt. Uh, at some point, Matt Mullenweg was asked, what would he change if WordPress were to start from scratch? And he listed all of these things, the table names in the Database don't make any sense. TinyMC is a pain. Uh, the user roles and compatibilities are really confusing and hard to work with. Widgets don't work on the page level. These are all things that WordPress made, it, choices WordPress made in the past that made, that made every forward progress harder because we can't just turn that thing off because backwards compatibility is so important to the project and the community. Um, that makes a site or a project hard to maintain it makes improvements more expensive to do. So that technical debt of WordPress or of your site in the specific implementation with the theme you're using makes it harder for you to iteratively change it over time. It's, it, it makes it almost impossible for you to swap out one thing for another. So in general, you should just avoid technical debt anywhere you spot that it could happen. Um, software makers hate technical debt. It's a pain in the butt, and it's the reason they hate their bosses so much. Um, so they've actually thought about this a lot for the last you know, 50 years as software has been made and used in industry. So one of the ideas that underpins the way they deal with avoiding technical debt is this, this acronym called SOLID. We're not going to go into it in depth. It's just a concept that exists out there. Definitely look it up if you're curious about this stuff, but don't worry if you don't understand it. The only letter I want to focus on is the S of SOLID, which stands for the Single Responsibility the concept is any component should be one thing and only one thing, and that all the responsibility for that thing should be contained within that component. For, for WordPress themes, that leads us to what a theme should actually be doing. And it should really only be doing one thing, which is providing the presentational layer of your WordPress site. It should be giving styles to the content within your WordPress site. It shouldn't be doing any of these things. So this is a, a basic list of guidelines for the four things you shouldn't be using a WordPress theme to do. <coughs> these are things your WordPress site should do, absolutely, but they aren't things your theme should be doing. So it shouldn't be registering post types. That's exactly what Ken's FAQ was. It was also what his contact form would have been. Anything like that that you get from a theme that comes out of specifically the theme if you turn off your theme and a bunch of page types on your left-hand column disappear, that's a problem and you probably shouldn't be using those page types. It should register taxonomies, which is exactly what my series um, was. Is It was a taxonomy that I was creating, but the theme was doing it such that when I changed themes, it disappeared. It shouldn't provide any kind of data storage, and that's exactly what the SEO I was talking about on Ken's example was. 
is it's, those are a set of custom fields, if you're familiar with the concept of said WordPress, that the theme is providing you in this nice little box um, and it's storing them for you, but it's also retrieving them for you on the other end. And so because it's storing and retrieving that data for you, it's not just presentational. A theme should also not, in my opinion, register any shortcodes. Not because shortcodes are themselves data storage, but because your posts are data that is being stored. And so over time, if you use a bunch of shortcodes in your posts that were tied to a specific theme, as you shift themes, your shortcodes will start to appear to people rather than being awesome banners. So the things that violate this basic idea, a lot of commercial themes on the market do. Because they're selling you on features rather than specific maintainability over time, which isn't a very sexy thing to be selling, um, they'll, they'll just pack in the features and pack in the features without a lot of regard to how they're, do, how they're working over time and whether or not they will be with you in the future. It's also people like me who are like, hey, I can figure this out. I'll just dump that into functions.php or put it into a specific part of my theme rather than thinking about what the actual best WordPress solution is. And finally, I call, I'm calling out, this is a commercial term that you'll see out there sometimes, app themes. It just is such a jarring idea to me. I, I thoroughly discourage you from, from pursuing an app theme. Um, so all of these things are essentially creating tight coupling between the two parts of your site, its functionality and how it looks. And that coupling creates a brittle structure so that as it moves into the future, you're deeply wedded to the current implementation and it's hard to change things. So theme coupling is obviously when your theme and the functionality of your site are conflated into a, a structure that works for now, but ties you into that theme forever into the future. Um, you can get rid of the coupling in the meantime, and that's what we're going to talk about. One thing that, that a lot of people will bring up when, when they hear about this problem is, well, that's not really a problem. I just will use this theme forever. And, and that, I mean, that is a valid statement. If you, if you have no intent of ever changing your WordPress site away from the current theme it's using, if it's a short-term thing, if it's a three-month marketing project rather than a site that you intend to keep forever, it definitely can work. If, if that site is working for your business purposes, it's not a specific problem that it has all the technical debt, but it still has the debt. So, if you have this problem, what can you do? The easiest thing is to create a plugin. You, making a plugin is pretty easy. I can figure it out. I figured it out like a month ago. And, and all you do is you can take everything that your theme is doing that it shouldn't be doing, put it into a single plugin. It doesn't have to be a pretty plugin, and it doesn't have to be very complicated, but if, if you put it all into a plugin, and the plugin is running beside your theme, you're no longer being held captive by that theme itself. And what things should you leave in your theme if you're going to do this? Essentially, any presentational logic, like if there's this PHP function you have that does a really awesome header thing, um, that can stay, uh, because it's so deeply presentational, you probably won't ever use it on a different theme. And so you can leave that behind inside a theme. That's the thing a theme should be doing. And also, if there are WordPress hooks you're using, like modifying the excerpt is a very common one because the default is a little nutty. Um, so if it's doing that, again, that's a presentational thing, and that makes sense inside of a theme. Um, a better solution than making one giant plugin, is to make a lot of plugins for all the functionality that the theme was providing for you that now you want separated out. Um, this is essentially about the single responsibility principle. If you make a short codes plugin and a hierarchies plugin and a custom post types plugin, each of those can be turned off and on based on your business needs going forward. And you don't need to worry about having one giant plugin that you're only using a quarter of. And even a, stepping above that, a good question to ask is, why were, why were you using the theme to do that in the first place? And does someone do that better? For SEO, there are a lot of really great SEO plugins. So a theme that's providing that functionality isn't necessarily the best way to achieve it. Similarly, if you're trying to sell things and you 
get an app theme that's made to sell things, you can probably use a, a plugin like WooCommerce and it'll give you a lot more flexibility, a lot more power, and it won't be coupled to the theme itself. Similarly, if you're trying to do uh, discussion or profiles, BB Press and Buddy Press are great projects. There are many other projects like this. Those are just the ones that I thought of. Um, the only thing about moving everything for plugins, though, is that you hit this new dependency problem, which is that you need WooCommerce for your e-commerce theme to be working, but it might not be there because it's just a plugin. Unfortunately, out of the box, WordPress doesn't have any way to manage this dependency. It doesn't have a way to even say to the user, hey, this theme looks funny because it doesn't have WooCommerce running. Um, fortunately, there are solutions. Um, this is kind of a developer-focused thing. Uh, if, you, if you are in the position of making a theme, uh, this is a really great little PHP class that essentially steps a user who's installed your theme for the first time through the process of making sure that they've got something. And it's actually something that you're seeing a lot more in the market. So if you do buy a commercial theme today, it's increasingly the case that you'll see this in action. And what this will do is it, it'll give you, right after you've installed the theme, it gives you a box. It's essentially a warning that it actually is expecting these plugins to be there. If you click on that, it brings up this screen, where it just lists for you all the plugins that it's wishing it had but doesn't currently. And then it'll let you install them just like you're updating inside WordPress or something. Uh, for, for anyone who is looking to use it, you just require the simple PHP file that you downloaded from them. And that's some kind of scary looking code that, uh, that you use to, uh, to install it. But essentially all you need to know is that a good developer will be using this, and so you'll be prompted to install plugins once you've activated your theme. Um, going beyond that, it would be great if Core had this kind of dependency built in. I don't know how likely it is, but Brian Krogsgaard made a really good post about why this is so, so useful and necessary for the WordPress ecosystem to really evolve in a positive direction. So if you're interested in that topic, I encourage you to check that out. Fortunately, um, the biggest theme marketplace has already woken up to this problem. So Envato, who runs ThemeForest, um, is actually requiring, I think starting in November, that their developers are moving in this direction and putting the functionality that doesn't need to be in a theme, has nothing to do with the presentation, into plugins that they then are going to prompt you to install. So it's actually, I'm, I'm, I'm as shocked to say it as many other people, it, it seems like ThemeForest is actually going to be a good place to shop for themes that are aware of this problem. And also, just being aware of the problem is itself a great start. Thanks. Any questions? Could you tell us a little bit more of an example of when you switch themes, what can happen? Okay. For example, if you're using a three column theme and you switch and upgrade to a two column theme, what kind of problems would you see and how would you repair them? Well, if, if, it's, if it's purely about columns, yes. that's exactly what should happen. Um, is Because that's a really a presentational question, you want the theme to be controlling that. Um, the kinds of things that will happen to people if you're not careful are... Um, I like how they spin out. <laughs> Just keep doing it. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, this, so, so this is a theme that I've actually seen in use, and it's it's do, it's providing all of these content types. Um, so it, it's letting you define uh, portfolio elements or contact forms or FAQs. And if you see something like that disappear when you turn off the theme, all that data is kind of lost. Um, it, it's recoverable, fortunately. You're not lost forever, but that's the kind of thing that you want to be aware of. As, with respect to like actual layout questions, I would say it's perfect that you can switch themes and that'll change. Uh, your widgets will move around, but that's again, it makes sense because you're switching. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
So if you have, um, um, say, three uh, functions that were in your theme and you said, well, I've got to put them into three separate plugins, do you have any sort of performance hit that you might worry about? Because now you're loading three separate plugins on the inwards. Yeah, I think generally the concern about actual loading of a plugin is kind of overstated. What's expensive about a plugin is typically not the specific loading of it at its start, but the things that a plugin might be doing in addition to simply turning on. So if it's just a function in three files instead of one, the performance hit is essentially negligible relative to expensive database calls. And Okay, um, I know I'm in trouble because I have, um, I've only used two themes extensively, Thesis and Genesis, and all my SEO is in that. So I really need to get that stuff out. Now, what do you recommend? Is all-in-one SEO is the one I've seen and used before? Are there other ones you might recommend? Um, Yoast, uh, I think it's WordPress SEO is what it's called or something. If you just search Yoast SEO, you'll find it. It, I, personally, it's the one I, I like the most, um, just Y-O-A-S-T, um, but either one of those, yeah, all-in-one SEO is perfectly fine. Um, either one of those will work as with you once you switch away from those themes, whereas if, as it's in the theme here, it's going to obviously get the one we're talking about. Okay, mine I, I can't speak to the specifics oh, yeah. of how Studio Press. What was the question? Is Studio Press data inside the theme for SEO? Well, I know it's an open question. It should, should we go download <coughs> Genesis right now? I've developed sites in Studio Press and Genesis, and I have a plugin for Yeah, I, I can't say for sure whether or not they've got it in the plugin. I would, I would guess they are moving in that direction. It, in general, people are being more and more aware of it. So you may be able to upgrade to a newer version of them, and that might spin off and access the data through a plugin. That was the idea, but I can't say if that does happen. searching for themes to use and things to avoid because of HTML5 and responsive design? Well, as far as design questions, um, that's a bit separate from what, we, what we're talking about, but um, obviously you do want a responsive theme in general today because it's way better. You, you just never know what device is going to come out onto the market. Um, with respect to who to buy from and that kind of thing, generally you know, the market's getting better. I don't, I don't want to call anyone out or anything, but... Um, but any legacy plugins or, or uh, conventions that a newbie wouldn't be aware of is a pool of quicksand. Um, in, in general, the, the one thing I would be very... Um, I, I, I would do... Uh, once, you, once you've looked at a theme and kind of tried it out, the first thing I would try, especially rec with respect to this, is just go turn off your theme and switch to a default WordPress theme like 2013 and just see what happened and if, whether any of your data went missing. If, if that happens, that's where you've got this problem. Yes. In itself, thank you. Okay. But if you, if you reactivate the other theme... Right. It'll come back. Oh, it is coming back. Yeah, yeah. What happens isn't that the data is lost forever, it's that you as a user can't really access it easily. A developer can go in there and like, you know, channel into the computer and figure it all out. Uh, but, but as a user, it'll, it'll seem like that data has just disappeared and you don't know how to get it. Your menu is what not Yeah. But the actual data is still in your database. Even, even with these problems, if you come to a, a good developer, 
they can figure it out and get that data back for you. It's not gone forever. Um, we're not talking terrible loss of life. It's just a, a problem that makes it harder for you to move forward because you've got to go recover that data before you can actually move forward. Thank you.